Hi guys. Okay, so we're back to uh, Trail Guide to the Body. Uh, we are now at page uh, 239, again 239, and we're still presenting head, neck, and face. Okay, so uh, come learn with me. We're going to be learning about the hyoid bone. Uh, look at the image here where we have the superior view of the hyoid. Okay, um, I have mentioned before the hyoid bone is more so a floating bone. Okay, so and I have... um. I did a video with regards to the superhyoid uh, and then the, um, the superhyoid and then the infrahyoid. Okay, superhyoid is on top, uh, proximal or superior. Uh, supra because it's supra or superior. Inferior um, uh, hyoid, infrahyoid is because it's in, inferior. Okay, um, so we have the greater horn here, we have the le lesser horn. And of course, we have the body. And keep in mind, we're looking at the superior view of the hyoid bone. Okay, so we have the lateral view of the hyoid bone here, and we we've got the greater horn in this lateral view. We have the lesser horn, and of course, we have the body. Okay, so again, having your partner in a supine or seated position, we're gonna place your index finger upon the tired cartilage. Okay, so you're gonna roll your finger pad superiorly over the tired cartilage. Okay, so we're gonna have to be careful because um, uh, it's very sensitive area. Just like when um, you know, the, you know, somebody had a whiplash, and we have to um, um, do an eco, you know, E. coli release. It's su super super sensitive. Um, the tired cartilage is uh, again is um. A very sensitive um, um, area um, going back um, and to the hyoid so number two then we're gonna gently palpate the sides of the hyoid with your first finger and thumb okay so the hyoid will be wider than the trachea okay so using gentle pressure we're gonna explore the surface of the hyoid as well as the small side-to-side -side movements if you have difficulty accessing the hyoid, you can encourage your partner to relax your tongue and jaw. Okay, so you're going to ask yourself uh, these questions to confirm. Are you superior to the tired cartilage or the Adam's apple, so to speak? Or uh, can you gently move the, th uh, the hyoid from side to side? I am right now at my hyoid bone and I could actually move them side to side. Okay, you guys can do it too. Okay, it, that will um, give some uh, release to the muscles that are the suprahyoid and the infrahyoid. Okay, so we're going to get into that um, in detail later on as we go um, proceed. Okay, so with your first finger and thumb on the other side of the hyoid, you can ask your partner to swallow. So do you feel the hyoid rise up and then return? So um, you're going to know that if you're in your proper landmarking, okay? So looking at image here, uh, image 5.30, so the hyoid bone um, at rest. You can see um, it's um, uh, uh, in a low, you know, lower and its placement during swallowing is on B. So it elevates and this one, um, it depresses, right? So we have here the figure on um, five. Uh, point nine, um, where um, the client in a partner's supine position, so isolating the hyoid bone. Okay, so I'm going to read this area here. So we have here the the gill arc arches arches. Sorry, my apologies. So the hyoid bone is more um, it's in an ancestral uh, remnant of the tissue that once formed grills. Okay, so the so in the evolution of the jaw, the gill arches. Um, the bone around the the gills, so A, uh, gravitated toward the head to hold the upper jaw next to the cranium, B, for fish, which do not have the long necks we do. The position of the height preside, provides an important link between the jaw and cranium. Cranium. Again, my apology. Uh, so for humans, the height lost this function and shifted down the neck to become the only non-articulating bone in the body. It is supported instead by the muscles that attach to its surface, such as the suprahyoid and infrahyoids. So see you guys at page 240.